Okay, so this is a revision video on protein synthesis. Um, five questions for you. Answer those questions and then we can go through answers. Okay, so let's take a look at the answers. So we start with a gene and we can label a few things on that. So we have Three bases uh, relate to the triplet code of DNA. And remember, exons are coding regions, introns are non-coding regions. So let's take a look at transcription. What I'll do is show you uh, the diagrams first. Um, that may help you work out anything that you might have missed. And then we'll go through the points you should have written down. So hopefully that, that helped you identify those four key points. Uh, we're going to cover three of them here and then we'll move on to step four in the next slide. Okay, so the fourth step we will go on to now. So we've got the pre-mRNA that we showed being produced in the last slide. So for this, um, the steps, or the last step you should have recognized is this. Obviously you should be recognizing that that is a codon. And then finally, as an added point, just recognize that mRNA leaves the nucleus by the nuclear pores. So let's move on to translation. So now we move on to translation. So we have our mRNA. What I will do is go through the animation and if you have spotted anything you've missed, you can add that. But also hopefully there's just this just helps show you the process in full. So that was translation. Let's look at the five points you should have uh, written down. Okay, so hopefully you got all those points. Now we'll move on to question three. So the codon sequence should be that. And the anticodons on the tRNA are this. And question four. So I've shown you the same gene, but there are two mutations in A and B. So in A, you should have recognized that it was a substitution. A G was changed to a C there. And in B, that's a deletion, so the fifth cytosine was deleted. And so what are the consequences of these mutate, types of mutation? Let's look at question five. So your answer should look something like this. So that's the first step. You're changing the amino acid primary sequence of the protein. And then the obvious consequence is that that can change the formation of hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, or disulfide bridges because you're changing or removing an R group that would be on that amino acid. And then that can alter the tertiary structure or 3D shape. And obviously we know that's key for the functioning of proteins. 
So if that changes, the protein may no longer function. And so hopefully what you understand is that because most enzymes are proteins, enzymes can be drastically affected by mutations. So I just wanted to make a few points about how these mutations can affect enzyme function. So there's just two extra points here. So the active site may change shape as a consequence of mutation or a change in amino acid sequence. Or it might be that by changing one of the amino acids, that amino acid may be important for binding to the substrate. And if that's changed, the reaction can no longer be catalyzed. 